Ah, good old BNC adapters. You know, got a lovely pile of different styles of adapters here. Most of them are these RCA to BNC adapters. And honestly, these are just straight crap. I never really understand why so many people will stand up for these low quality RCA adapters and defend them. Why would you use an expensive piece like a BVM or PVM and then try to shortchange yourself by buying these $1 a piece, $2 a piece uh, RCA adapters. Uh, these are higher quality ones. Now you do have a low quality gold and a high quality gold. So the low quality gold is here on this side and this is the higher quality. And just by feeling them, you can tell a difference. This one's a lot heavier. I've done a review of Canair adapters, which is this one. I'll put a link to that review up top, but just in case you want to look at it, here's some other cool stuff I thought I'd show you. Check out this cool S-Video adapter. This one is S-Video on this side, and then it actually breaks it out. So you can use BNC cables and get your Chroma and Luma from there. Check out this one. <laughs> An interesting little splitter. So, how about this? This is the opposite. RCA on this side. BNC on this side. Interesting. And then here's another one that is kind of funny. This one gives you coax on this side, or RF to BNC on this side. Uh, just a, a different connection type. Sometimes you'll need to use also these 75 ohm adapters, and these will also range in quality. Pretty much if they're weighted heavy and they look like they're, you know, properly built and shielded on the inside. This one doesn't have anything. Enough of these things. Let's get to the monitor. All right, everybody. Well, here is the monitor. That is a Panasonic BTH1390YN color CRT monitor. Now, this one does have a 13-inch diagonal screen, and it's just loaded with some amazing features. The one today was produced in 2001, and what I'd like to do is show you a little bit more inside the monitor with the hardware, and we'll discuss some of those great features as well as what inputs this monitor supports and some of the other great features of the tube in this, and it is a shadow mask tube. Now let's start and take a closer look here at our BTH1390. If I can get some focus there, there we go. This is a color video monitor made by Panasonic. Let's take a look down here at some of the amazing buttons. We've got volume, phase, chroma, bright, and contrast controls. We've got an underscan button. Now the pulse cross button that is meant for checking our sync in uh, video formats. And then we've got color off, blue check, memory mode. Then we have input selections where we have two videos, A's and B's, and then we have RGB's component as well as Y slash C, which is our S-Video external sync. And then we have menu controls, degauss, uh, and up and down, left and right selection, arrows, as well as enter, and then a power button. The resolution on this tube is 750 TV lines. And again, it does have the curve at every angle for the shadow mask look. And feel it's also considered a high definition tube according to the marketing materials from Panasonic. Now look we're gonna turn this around and look inside. I've already gotten in here and cleaned it out thoroughly. It's very nice. You're gonna see a lot of parts not from Panasonic. This one appears to be made primarily by JVC and JVC did make high quality monitors at this time and if you look right there on top of the yoke we have markings from JVC. We also have a couple of adjustments here where we can tweak our convergence right there. And then if we go down our yoke, we have our purity rings as well as our convergence rings. We look back here at our anode cap and then our aquadag paint. If we look at the tube branding, this one is going to be difficult for me to get the camera lens down in there, but it is a 
Chung Wei, I believe how you say it, tube. Those are really high quality tube. You'll, tubes you'll find in a lot of uh, shadow mask, high quality shadow mask monitors. They could be PC monitors, security monitors, even pro monitors like this. On this side, right here, is the power supply to the CRT. See, look at that huge 400 volt by 470 microfarad capacitor. That's just gigantic. Look at the size of that thing. One of the biggest I've seen in a CRT in a while. Down there is our main processing board. At the bottom, next to our, our JVC made flyback, right down there. And over here, I'm going to say is our deflection PCB. If you had a deflection problem, you would check this board and check these capacitors out. I'm wondering if Panasonic used their own branding. These look like their own brands of uh, capacitors, so they might have actually used some of their own capacitors here in this monitor. Now right here is our input board where we've got our video inputs. Let me show you. These are kind of set up differently than other pro monitors. You see how they've got this white circle around the in and out. And then we've got a selector we can have open for if we're daisy chaining out a signal or ohm termination. So we don't have to actually have terminators on this monitor. You just, it's got built-in terminators. We've got YC down here. Now look at this. Video A has this and then it gives this funky line around the S video input that leads to these audio input and output. That's because that goes with this line A. And if we go video B, you see it's got the same selector, composite in and out, and that connects with the lines over to our YC. So this is daisy, or this is sharing that input line, and that's why there's a YC connection button on the front. You can select video B, select YC, and then use this video or this audio input and output for that. And then finally down here is our RGB. And actually sync is over here on the side. So if we want to use RGB, we need to do R G B, which is actually green, blue, red on this monitor. And then we've got sync. Or we can do green, blue, red, actually Y, what B Y and R Y. And we can do component. Now before I send a video signal and check out the menu here, we've got our menu. This may have a selectable aspect ratio where you can change to 16 by 9. I'm wondering if we'll have anything so, or any kind of support for anything over 480i. I'm doubtful that we will, but you never really know. The most important thing down here to notice is whether you're using RGB or component. We're going to try component, which it's set to, and then Anything else in here that might be important, the color temperature, just notice what that is. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw our signal into component. I've not tried it yet. Then we're going to use the Xbox and let's just see how the screen looks. And that actually looks really, really sharp. Hi res. Just make sure the brightness and contrast isn't turned up too bad or too low. And we'll go ahead and let it load its game, and it's going to try to load it into 480p because of the settings on the Xbox, and we're losing. See how we've lost half the screen, so this will not accept that 480, uh, 480p signal. Let's go ahead. It's got Halo, and this is what it would look like if you're trying to throw 480 into a monitor that does not support 480. So if I open that back up we can change our settings all right there we have the correct screen looks very sharp and component now this panasonic monitor will support 240p also so you can use a lot of your analog video consoles that are in 8-bit 16 32-bit games and they'll look just wonderful You'll get that scan line effect. Again, this is a BVM or broadcast quality monitor, so you're gonna have a little bit sh more sharpness. This is gonna be closer to something like a uh, 14M4U if you wanted to compare it to a Sony PVM, or if you wanted to move over to JVC, they also made some of those TMH monitors that would have been on comparison with this and did also have that 750 line tube. And this monitor, as I showed you before, is pretty much made by 
uh, JVC and then Panasonic put a couple of their labels on the front and the back to sell the monitor as a Panasonic branded monitor. Well, this is absolutely a cool little monitor and I know some people who are really into JVC CRTs will be now looking for this Panasonic monitor because they love that shadow mask look of the tube and I can't you know, fault anybody for that. I think that the shadow mask look is awesome and this is a great example of a shadow mask. It also has the really awesome built-in menu to help you service and kind of maintain your monitor. Um, it's also easy to access the back of this monitor and clean it out and all the parts are really high quality. Uh, so all in all, I would definitely recommend this as a gaming monitor or for any retro purposes as long as you're okay with the fact that it will only do 240p and 480i, uh, then I think this would be a great fit for anybody. All right, that's gonna do it for today's episode, but before I go, please, if you have any questions about this monitor or any other CRT-related question, go check out my podcast I do with uh, Lewis. It's on Zez Retro, that channel, and it's the CRP, the Cathode Ray Podcast. We do that weekly. We answer questions from viewers like you, and also go over issues that I run into and Lewis runs into with cathode ray tubes and just other retro fun stuff in the community. Definitely go check that out. I'll leave a link in the description for the video and leave your question in the comments and we'll get to them on our next episode of that show. Uh, but thanks again for watching today. If you have any comments about this video, please let me know what you think down below and I will see you all next time with some more retro content.